This film describes how to push the aircraft rearwards or tow the aircraft forwards with the nose gear. The aircraft may be towed or pushed back at maximum ramp weight with the engines shut down or running at idle. To begin the procedure, make sure that the safety devices are installed on the landing gears. The wheel chocks are in place and check if the parking brake is on. Do not tow the aircraft if the dimension H is more than 300 millimeters, 11.8 inches. If you do, you can cause damage to the internal centering cams of the nose landing gear. Referring to your aircraft maintenance manual, make sure that the aircraft is stable. Let us suppose that this procedure has been correctly performed. During this procedure, depending on the configuration you are in, the aircraft needs to be energized either using the APU, a specific ground cart, an engine running, or using the tractor itself. That being said, let us suppose that the aircraft is already energized and the EIS start procedure done. Outside, on the nose wheel steering deactivation electrical box, set the ground towing control lever to the towing position and install the pin. In the cockpit, on the upper ECAM page, the nose wheel steering disconnected message comes into view on the memo page. Check on the yellow brake pressure triple indicator that the accumulator pressure pointer is in the green range. We recommend pressurizing the yellow hydraulic system using the yellow electrical pump. Thus, the braking system will be more efficient and safer. Now, we have to install the tow bar. Caution! Make sure that the tow bar has a damping system, a calibrated shear pin, two calibrated turn shear pins. This is to prevent high loads causing damage to the landing gear. Refer to your aircraft maintenance manual for the calibration of these pins. On the nose landing gear, install the tow bar on the tow fitting and connect the tow bar to the tractor. Caution. Put the parking brake control switch in the off position before you tow or push back the aircraft. This is to prevent high loads causing damage to the nose landing gear. On the yellow brake pressure triple indicator, the brake's pressure pointers go down. In the cockpit, set the lighting system. Set the exterior light navigation and logo switch to on. At night, set the interior light dome switch to bright. And if the anti-collision lighting is necessary for the local airport regulations or the airline procedures, set the exterior light beacon switch to on. On the VHF system, in order to communicate with the control tower during towing operations, release out the VHF push button switch and select the control tower frequency on the radio management panel. In order to communicate with the ground mechanics, on the audio control panel, set the interphone radio switch to the interphone position and release out the interphone reception push button.
For safety reasons, a distance of 3 meters, 10 feet, must be kept clear around the nose wheels, tow bar, and tractor when the aircraft moves. Towing speed limitation depends on the position of the passenger, crew, and cargo doors. For these speed limitations, refer to your aircraft maintenance manual. The maximum permitted steering angle on each side of the aircraft centerline is 95 degrees. When you use the front fittings to push the aircraft rearwards with engine at idle, this angle is limited to 40 degrees. At this point, be sure that all warnings and cautions of your aircraft maintenance manual procedure and previous precautions are applied. Now the aircraft can be towed slowly and smoothly. Two other persons have to monitor the wingtips during the towing operation, and one person is required in the cockpit in order to operate the brakes. When you complete the towing operation, make sure that the nose wheels are aligned with the aircraft centerline. Inform the cockpit to apply the parking brake. And check that the parking brake light is on on the nose wheel steering deactivation electrical box. Put the wheel chocks in position. Disconnect the tow bar from the nose gear fittings. On the nose wheel steering deactivation electrical box, remove the safety pin and set the ground towing control lever to the normal position. At the same time, in the cockpit, on the ECAM memo display, the message nose wheel steering disconnected disappears. On the lighting system, reset the exterior light beacon and navigation and logo switches to off. Reset the interior light dome switch to off. On the communication system, cut the cockpit control tower VHF link by pressing in the VHF push button on the radio management panel. Reset the interphone radio switch to the neutral position. Depressurize the yellow hydraulic system, do the EIS stop procedure and de-energize the aircraft electrical circuits.